Hello 3DP, how you doing? I just thought I would say hello and speak with you before the Easter break and um, I just wanted to share with you some poetry actually and I just wanted to read to you some famous poems written by famous authors as well as some new authors and um, I just want you to enjoy them and perhaps um, find a poem that you could recite and that just means to learn off by heart. Um, so that could be a challenge over the Easter break. But we'll, we'd also, Miss, Miss Lewis and I, would like you to write your own Easter poem. And what I'll do is I'll read um, an Easter poem for you at the end. But I just wanted to share with you, um, there's someone called A. A. Milne, and he was the author of Winnie the Pooh. And he wrote a poem called Wind on the Hill. So I want to share that with you. No one can tell me, nobody knows, where the wind comes from, where the wind goes. It's flying from somewhere as fast as it can. I couldn't keep up with it, not if I ran. But if I stopped holding the string of my kite, it would blow with the wind for a day and a night. And then when I found it, wherever it blew, I should know that the wind had been going there too. So then I could tell them where the wind goes, but where the wind comes from, nobody knows. So that was called Wind on the Hill. Um, another author uh, is uh, um, Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote Treasure Island. And I've got um, a poem here called The Moon. So this is The Moon. The moon has a face like the clock in the hall. She shines on thieves on the garden wall, on streets and fields and harbour keys, and birdies asleep in the forks of the trees. The squallowing cat and the squeaking mouse, the howling dog by the door of the house, the bat that lies in bed at noon, all love to be out by the light of the moon. But all of the things that belong to the day cuddle to sleep to be out of her way, and flowers and children close their eyes till up in the morning the sun shall arise. And that was called the moon. He also wrote My Shadow, which is quite a nice one, so I'll, I'll tell you about um, My Shadow. I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me, and, what's ca and what can be the use of him if is more than I can see. He is very, very like me from the heels up to my head, and I see him jump before me when I jump into my bed. The funniest things about him is the way he likes to grow, not all like proper children, which is always very slow, for he sometimes shoots up taller like an India rubber ball, but he sometimes gets so small that there's nothing of him at all. He hasn't got a notion of how children ought to play and can only make a fool of me in every sort of way. He stays so close beside me, he's a coward you can see. I think shame to stick him to nursery as that shadow sticks to me. One morning, very early, before the sun was up, I rose and found the shining dew on every buttercup. But my lazy little shadow, like an arrant sleepy head, had stayed at home behind me and was fast asleep in bed. So that was um, The Moon and My Shadow by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, I'm now going to read um, a couple of more up-to-date poems, um, which can be, um, you can find anywhere actually, on, online or in books. But this one is called My Big Fat Cat. I own a big fat cat, the fattest for miles around. Whoever, wherever there's lots of food, that's well where he'll be found. He's really good at eating. It's a talent, I suppose. I'm sure if he kept, keeps at it, he'd win the talent shows. I own a big fat cat. He weighs at least a ton. He couldn't run to save his life. Yes, he isn't much fun. His favourite room's the kitchen. I'm sure we all know why. He eats just about everything. So that's why, with a sigh. I'd like to tell you, teacher, I'd like to tell you straight. I might have accidentally dropped my homework in his plate. <laughs> I wonder what he would have done with that homework. That's a good excuse anyway. All right, so the next one I'm going to read is called 
messy room and hopefully that this is not the case for a lot of you at the moment you should be tidying your room every day okay so it's called messy room whose ever room this is should be ashamed his underwear is hanging on the lamp his raincoat is there in this overstuffed chair and the chair is becoming quite mucky and damp his workbook is wedged in the window. His sweater's been thrown on the floor. His scarf and one ski are beneath the TV and his pants have ke been carelessly hung on the door. His books are all jammed in the chair closet. His vest has been left in the hall. A lizard named Ed is asleep in his bed and his smelly old sock has been stuck to the wall. Who's ever a room this is should be ashamed. Donald or Robert or Willie or... Huh? You say it's mine? Oh dear. I knew it looked familiar. <laughs> um, I'm going to read this one. It's, it's like a mini story, actually. I think you'd like it. It's called The Boy Who Didn't Like Ice Cream. A boy who didn't like ice cream? That almost seems like a crime. This is the story of Logan and about, tr and about trying foods more than one time. Logan did not enjoy ice cream. He thought it was too cold. Too cold on his tongue, too cold on his teeth, too cold right down to his toes. No one could believe it. Just try one bite, they'd say. He'd shake his head. No, thank you, he'd say. Maybe some other day. At parties, the zoo, at the beach, ice cream was everywhere. But as everyone enjoyed the nice cold treat, Logan preferred gummy bears. One time Logan did try ice cream, took a big bite, his eyes squeezed. As the ice cream melted in his mouth, he got a huge brain freeze. Never again, Logan said. Eating ice cream is no fun. I cannot freeze my brain again. I've only got this one. No one was upset as one man, that is for sure. It was Logan's Pop Pop, the great ice cream connoisseur. Please, Logan, Pop begged. Please try it one more time. Just try a small bite, Pop said. Your brain will be just fine. Logan gulped, his eye squinted tight. Pop Pop was never wrong. Maybe just one more try won't really hurt. He decided to be strong. Little bites are the trick, Pop Pop winked and said. That way the cold goes to your tummy instead of your head. So Logan scooped a tiny bite of homemade vanilla ice cream. He squeezed his eyes tight, his, he squeezed his eyes, stuck out his tongue and then let out a scream. I like it, Logan yelled and Pop Pop laughed. I knew you would, my boy. They laughed and both enjoyed Tummy's full of ice cream joy. So what did you learn from Logan? Remember this little rhyme. Trying new things doesn't hurt and try them more than one time. So there you go. That was called The Boy Who Didn't Like Ice Cream. Okay, so some rhymes, some, sorry, some poems can rhyme, but they don't have to. So what we would like you to do is write uh, your own Easter poem. Think about all the things that are linked to Easter. Um, what does Easter mean to you? Um, and then just write a small poem and let's share all our Easter poems. Um, maybe you can send them in to me and we'll um, have a little book of Easter poems. So this is called Meeting the Easter Bunny. And the author is Rowena Bennett. And it was written actually in 1930. So here we go. On Easter morn at early dawn before the cocks were crowing, I met a bobtail bunnykin and asked where he was going. Tis in the house and out the house a tipsy tipsy towing. Tis round the house and about the house a lightly I am going. But what is that of every hue you carry in your basket? Tis eggs of gold and eggs of blue, I wonder that you ask it. Tis chocolate eggs and bonbon eggs and eggs of red and grey, for every child in every house on bonny Easter day. 
He perked his ears and winked his eye and twitched his little nose. He shook his tail, what tail he had, and stood up on his toes. I must be gone before the sun, the east is growing grey. Tis almost time for bells to chime, so he hippity hopped away. And there we go, that was called Meeting the Easter Bunny. So just a few poems there to get you into the mood. Um, like I said to you, it doesn't have to rhyme, but just um, think about those maybe short sentences. Think about what you think Easter is all about. It's going to be different for every person. But I do wish you um, a lovely, lovely Easter with your family. Uh, stay at home, but be in the garden, explore, and um, just have a really lovely, lovely time over Easter. Okay, so I will say goodbye to you and happy Easter to you. Bye bye.